Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I'm just a few weeks shy of my one year anniversary of living in Spain. So that means I'm currently in the process of renewing my non-lucrative visa for two more years. Now, I'm not gonna cover that in this video today because we're in process. So hopefully in about four to six weeks that will all be completed and I will release a video covering all the documents, how long it takes, what you gotta do. There is one thing I will note though, it will be done through your local immigration office here in Spain when you do your renewal. So you don't have to worry back to your home country dealing with consulates, that's all over. So if you've watched my older videos, you'll know that when I moved over to Spain, I lived down on the Costa del Sol in Malaga province in Fuenjarola. Well, I have actually moved now. I'm up on the Costa Blanca in Alicante province in the city of Benidorm. And we are quite enjoying it. It's a little different uh, than uh, the Costa del Sol. There's a lot of reasons why we moved. I made an entire video on that about a month or so ago. I will link it below. But we are thoroughly enjoying our new home up here on the Costa Blanca. We've been here for about two months now and uh, got no complaints. All right, so I'll just cover a few things uh, to start off. Uh, in regards to banking, uh, like I said in my older videos, Wise Money Transfer Service, that is gonna be one of the most valuable tools you have. I still use it every month. Um, that's how I get my money over here to Spain. In regards to my bank account in Spain, I'm still with Santander. Still highly recommend them. Um, at Santander, it seems like they're one of the only banks that don't have a lot of fees. So I don't have a monthly fee or an ATM withdrawal fee. Uh, basically, the requirements are move 600 euros into your account or more and use your card like a, a couple times a month. And that's basically it and everything will be free. Now, on to healthcare. Because I'm in the process of renewing uh, my visa, I had to renew, of course, my private healthcare for another year. So I'm now good up till the 31st of December, 2024. And I stayed with the same company, A-S-S-S-A. -S 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 -A, and... Uh, yeah, they've been fabulous. My uh, premium went up only two euros this year, so now I'm at 643 for the entire year, so fantastic. I still deal with the office down in uh, Fuenjarola because Judith and the staff there were absolutely amazing and they continue to be. And the online portal is very useful. Like I said in previously videos, I did kind of more of a deep dive. I'll link that below. And then the other thing about living up here in Benidorm is there's a group of hospitals here that have won, like it's one of the most prestigious awards here. There's a chain of them throughout the Valencia community here on the coast. And uh, well, here, I'll just explain it to you. So HCB de Benidorm is accredited with the Joint Commission International, the most prestigious international health quality seal in the world. So basically they cater to international clients. The doctors there speak a slew of languages um, and they have over 40 services combined into the one hospital. So it's basically a one-stop shop and it's won awards for, I guess, like the quality of the healthcare. Luckily, I have not had to use it. So uh, thank God for that, but it's literally one of the best hospitals I guess in Spain, or hospital networks in Spain. So very happy with that. So you're probably wondering why I moved from the Costa del Sol up to the Costa Blanca. Well, there's a bunch of reasons and I outlined them in a video. Uh, definitely check that out. But one of the major reasons um, was the style and the price of the property. We find your money goes much further and the property seemed to be bigger up here. Uh, we're currently living in a three bedroom, basically American style property. We have a full kitchen, a full dining room, uh, full laundry room, three bedrooms. We love it. We're kind of right in the center. 
Um, we're close to all the festivals and fiestas and all that kind of stuff that takes place. So we're really enjoying the new property. We're still gonna rent for a few more years. Uh, we're gonna check some other areas out around the Alicante province. We could end up just buying in Benidorm, but the houses here are a much better value and they seem to have much more space, which coming from North America is kind of a big deal. So our lifestyle here in Spain has been amazing. Of course, that's why many people move over here. Combined with the weather and the food and the amount of things going on, like the fruits and the vegetables, the seafood, the meat, it is amazing here in Spain. The cost of it is really, I mean, they've had some inflation, but not like the inflation they've had back in Canada and the United States where people's grocery bills are going through the roof. Of course, Spain is an extremely safe country when you compare it back to North America and other parts of the world. Uh, there's not a lot of shootings going on here. Uh, it's extremely safe. We walk around, sometimes we're out till four in the morning uh, because stuff obviously starts late here and finishes late here. And we walk around the streets and it, you know, you're gonna have no problem. The other great thing is their trail systems here are amazing, like if, to get out for hiking and walks and stuff like that. They were fantastic back in Canada, and that was one of the things we really, really enjoyed about Canada is the nature part. Well, Spain has base, I mean, the country's not as big, but there is so many trails along coasts into old castles, and there is so much, and we're gonna hit the interior of the country and see what's going on there. It's supposed to be a little more underpopulated, so the hiking and uh, sightseeing should be absolutely amazing. So. The lifestyle here is kind of what you make of it, but you can live a very healthy lifestyle outside. Of course, the beaches are unrivaled here. They're amazing. And Benidorm is, uh, they have two giant beaches. Basically like Fuengarola had that eight kilometers of beach. Well, uh, they basically have that here, only it's broken into Poniente and Levante Beach with a nice old town smack dab in the center of it. It's absolutely gorgeous. All right, so what's the shopping like here? Is it the same as North America? Yeah, it is, and then some. They have literally everything. You don't need to worry about bringing a ton of stuff. Uh, obviously, you can ship stuff over if that's what you wanna do. We went the other route where we just bring some suitcases, and uh, we literally stocked all our house here. Plus, your electronics aren't gonna come from North America and work over here, so you gotta buy all brand new TVs and all that stuff, not a big deal. Um, the stores here are fully stocked from stuff all over Europe and the world. For instance, Carrefour, which is like Europe's Walmart. It's kind of a bad way to explain it. It's much better than a Walmart, but they have everything from washing machines, TVs, automotive, pets, uh, a little bit of clothing, and they have a fantastic uh, food section wine and alcohol also they have an international section where they carry products from the united states france germany south america the uk it's amazing and they also have an app and if you use the app and you scan it every time you go through the checkout you'll eventually get a uh, kind of like a store credit check like my last one here in september was 27 euros so it's not really life-changing but it's kind of nice to get a little bit back and also a grocery store here up on the Costa Blanca, Consum. They also have kind of a similar program. They'll email you a check, uh, which you can use in, in store. Uh, they're an also a very well stocked grocery store. Meat selection is fantastic. They also carry some international products, Thailand, Vietnamese, uh, of course, Mexican, and of course the UK. So the stores are amazing. You don't have to worry, you're not gonna go without most cities and uh, at least the bigger size cities have kind of like uh, like a big box shopping area in it. The one here in Finistrat just outside of Benidorm is fantastic. They have literally everything, all kinds of nice restaurants up there, uh, decathlon, pet stores, uh, clothing stores, of course, uh, media market, which is like your best buy. Uh, what else? Uh, Leroy Merlin is like your Home Depot. So you're not gonna go without um, life is pretty much the same here. It's just way nicer. <laughs> That's really all I can say about that. 
So another great thing about living in Spain, of course, is there is no need for a car. Now, of course, if you're living out in the Campo or in the interior, then you're probably going to want one. Or if you're commuting uh, long distances, but we are not doing that. The public bus service here in Benidorm is really good. It will get you, it actually leaves the city and goes to other areas like Altea, Albir, Finistrat. So that's very convenient. Uh, the standard fare would be a Euro 60, but if you're here for a long time or if you live here like us, you can get a card uh, from the bus driver and it drops your fare down to 70 cents. Uh, so amazingly cheap. They also have the medium to long range buses that will get you everywhere like Alicante, Valencia, uh, Barcelona, Denia. Fantastic service, just like down in the south, they had the Avanza buses that you can book them all online and uh, book your trip in advance, pay with your card, you just show up with your phone, scan it. And of course they have international airport, just like down in Malaga, you can get pretty much anywhere in the world. Same as Alicante. Uh, and if you can't get any of there, you can, it's a quick, I think it's a 45 minute flight over to Madrid. And then literally the world is at your fingertips. Close proximity to Africa, of course, if you wanna do some visiting down there. Middle East is not far. And Spain is an amazing base to travel Europe. Uh, and of course, you have high speed trains going all across uh, Spain and up into France and, and, and onwards. So we plan on exploring all of Spain and then using our base here in Alicante to travel all of Europe. We're looking to go to Amsterdam for like the tulips when they come out next year and stuff. So we are loving the travel options and it's very affordable. Um, like most of the flights, the trains are very affordable, of course. Uh, the flights, depending on where you're going inside the country, I find Iberia is a fantastic airline. Uh, and then of course there's Ryanair if you're looking for some really, really cheap flights. And uh, they have a ton of destinations out of Alicante in the summer. Like you could get up to Norway and all through Scandinavia and those kind of areas in the summer. I think those routes kind of, uh, get uh, peeled back a bit in the winter. But anyways, the travel options and transportation are out of this world here. It's so completely different. Back in Canada, it's like a fortune just to go from Toronto to Calgary. And now it's like I can fly to another country for under a hundred euros. Like it's, in it's insane. So the entertainment options here in Spain are plentiful. There's so much to do. I of course live in Benidorm, which is a huge British um, holiday spot. So there is everything from like tributes to Michael Jackson, Pink, Adele, literally you name it. Everybody's here. Elvis Presley, there's comedians, there's like illusionists and there is so much stuff going on. It's like a little mini Las Vegas without all the casinos. Like the entertainment is top notch and most of it is completely free. All you gotta do is buy a drink uh, when you show up. We've been out plenty of times. We love the comedians, of course, and the live music other than the tributes, but there's like some cover bands uh, that like one at the Western Saloon is one of the best bars. My wife, we go there quite a bit for the uh, music and the bands are out of this world. It's a really good time and it's super safe and it's pretty affordable considering you're not paying for a ticket, you're just paying for a drink here and there. Uh, so yeah, and then of course, Ben and Orm seems to be the fiesta capital. Of course, Spain has so much celebrations and religious holidays and parties going on, but Ben and Orm seems to be like the epicenter of it. Like they have, I think one of the biggest prides uh, in the whole country, like Pride Week, and then they have, um, the fancy dress party, which is coming up in November. I haven't attended, but I looked it up on YouTube and I think it's the biggest in Europe, um, if not the biggest in the world. And it's hard to explain uh, what's it. We have nothing like it in North America that I know of. Think of Halloween for adults without the trick or treating on steroids. It's like 40,000 people on a few blocks dressed up in all these crazy costumes. I cannot wait to attend it but there always seems to be something going on. If you uh, hang out in any of the plazas around town hall, there's like a concert or a parade or like, we've only been here two months in Benidorm and the amount of parades and fiestas, it's mind blowing. There's always something going on here. It is so fun.
All right, so what is life like living in Spain? Of course, there's all kinds of trails and outdoor activities and beaches. You can do all kinds of that. But then you kind of want to be a little more fulfilled throughout your day. So there is tons of volunteer opportunities here. Take a look around your town or your city. Obviously, the bigger cities will have more options. Um, but there is lots to get into. Animal rescue is big here in Spain. My wife's very interested in uh, working with a dog rescue. So that's kind of interesting. Also, the Royal British Legion has branches all over Spain. And you don't have to be British or served in the military to join. They do all kinds of work around uh, Spain, of course. And of course, with Remembrance Day and the Poppy Appeal, they do a lot of that kind of stuff. Of course, we're still continuing on our language journey, which will be never ending for us at, at our age, I, I think. Um, we also bought uh, season tickets to the local uh, football club here in Benidorm, which is fantastic. And uh, so that season runs from September to May. They play on Sundays. And so we have season tickets to all the home games. Everybody is super welcoming here in Spain. I find that there's no problem to really integrate into the communities or the clubs or whatever. Um, of course, in Benidorm, there is a large British uh, population here and uh, they, they are super friendly, welcoming. They don't mind having a couple Canadians kicking around. And of course, the local Spanish are amazing. They are very friendly, very inclusive. So it's been a wonderful opportunity to live here in Spain. Highly recommend you do it. And there is so much that you can get into. Of course, just what I mentioned, plus there's probably so much more that you can get into here. The uh, possibilities are limitless. So get out and get active and it will make your time here in Spain much better because the honeymoon period does uh, kind of wear off of the tap a sip and wine on the beach, you're gonna wanna get into something or else you might get a little bored. All right, so do I miss anything about North America? Um, yeah, but very, very, very small little things. Um, one, personal space. And uh, you'll probably know what I'm talking about if you grew up in North America. We have these giant yards and houses. We have all kinds of space. And even when you're in a store or a mall, people kind of, there's like that little bubble around you that people don't usually invade. Well, here in Spain, I think it's a whole European thing. They're like right on your heels. If you've been over here, you probably know what I mean. And I'm not talking about on the train and stuff. Sure, that, that happens. But like, there's all kinds of space, but they will just stand on top of you. I think it's just the way we grow up. Back home, we have tons of space. Here they don't. So people are just used to being like, you know, push together, but we're used to kind of having our elbow room. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I kind of miss that some days anyways, some days it's, it can be very congested in areas, especially when you live in the city, like I do. Uh, probably if you're out in the Campo, that is not an issue. Uh, the other thing is your restaurant experience, two little minor things. So back home, as soon as you sit down, you usually have a glass of ice water in front of you. That, I've never seen that anywhere in Europe. Uh, you almost always have to buy your water, which is bizarre. And then they don't ever refill it. So it's so strange because back home, like the waiters, waitresses, they are on you. Like if your glass is empty, boom, there's another Coke Zero on the way. There's a jug of water on the way. They're refilling everybody. Like you don't even have to ask. Here, you almost have to flag them down. Um, the service is great. Uh, if you're at a fine dining restaurant, the service is fantastic. They will stop by all the time. But if you're at just kind of like a casual run of the mill place, uh, once you get your drink and your food, they kind of just leave you alone. They don't really come back and check on you. Hey, do you want another soda or anything like that? It's not really a thing. You kind of got to flag them down. Um, so I do miss that. Cause that, especially when it's like hot as, hell out here like it can be 40 degrees and they're like here's your 200 milliliter tiny coke and then they never come back like i probably need to order about three of those at a time um the other thing is when you're trying to get your bill and you if you've probably noticed this so back home sometimes they're really aggressive and they're like trying to flip the table so they're like you're not having dessert here's your bill like get out of here sort of thing um 
over here, they, they won't do that. They'll just, if, if you have your beer, they will just leave you alone. They won't bring you your, like they won't even come and ask if you want the bill. Because I believe in Europe, it's um, viewed as rude to rush people from their dinner. In North America, it's the opposite. Like a lot of, like my wife always says, we're from North America, we like to eat and run. Now, not always, obviously, if we're out for like a special night or it's like date night or whatever. But sometimes you're just like, all right, you know, like let's grab a bite and then we'll go to Carrefour and, you know, get some shopping done. So you just want to get moving and, uh, yeah, they don't do the really get moving. You almost got to flag them down. And sometimes it's almost like they will kind of look the other way as they walk by. I don't know. It's very bizarre. Um, so I do miss that, especially when you're, you know, cause like everybody back home, you go out on a Saturday, you're hitting the mall and then you're stopping at whatever restaurant and grabbing a bite to eat. And you just want to get moving. Like you're not there for the two hour experience. So that is kind of weird. Uh, but most times, I mean, it's really not a big deal if that's what you're doing for the evening or whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that's really the only two things I miss. There's one thing I do not miss, which is the freezing cold of Canada. Can't stand that. Uh, glad to be in the heat. Uh, now mind, I did have a comment one day, like somebody said, well, it can't be good to be in minus 30 all the time, but it can't be good to be in plus 30. Well, in Spain, if you've ever been here, it's not plus 30 all year long. So the summer is hot. It gets up to like 40 in a lot of the areas. But as the fall comes, like it's already dropping down here. What are we in? Uh, the beginning of October, the highs, well, we're in a bit of a heat wave right now, but they were like 26 and that will continue to drop. Like soon in the morning, it'll eventually in January or February, like I was here last February and it was cold in the morning. It was probably like four degrees. I had gloves on, a vest. That will be coming back soon. So it's not 30, it's not like Mexico where it just stays hot or Thailand where it just stays hot all year round. There's definitely a winter season here. Um, I mean, Madrid has had snow, they've had snow here in Benidorm. So it does happen. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's not hot all year round, but the shoulder season, it can be very warm. Like September was almost just as hot as August. August was hot and humid here in Benidorm, which I was surprised because it's more of an arid kind of uh, climate around like the landscape, but it was so humid. I think it was more humid here than it was in Malaga, which I never would have believed unless if I lived here. But yeah, so that's really all I miss. Anyways, if you're moving to Spain, congratulations. And if you want to move to Spain, do it. Just make it happen if you can. It is so worth it. Your life will improve tenfold over here. Uh, of course, it is what you make of it. But the opportunity is here to have a fantastic life. So I highly recommend everybody does that. All right, so I think I covered just about everything I wanted to cover in the video. Just a few small little points here. So keep an eye out for that uh, non-lucrative visa renewal video. That will be, um, that should be very helpful to most of you. If you wanna look at what's going on in and around either the Malaga area or the Alicante area, I am still making travel videos, so check out my channel if you wanna, if you wanna see what's happening. Also, if you have any questions, you can either leave them below in the comments or you can go to my channel page on YouTube, go to the about section and my email address will be there. You can send me an email. Lots of people have in the past. I don't mind answering questions or taking emails. Uh, yeah, so for now, I think that's about all. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.